Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back, and this is a breakdown of the fifth episode of Marvel Studios' What If titled Zombies. Let me get right into this very quickly because there's a lot of stuff to look at. Now, one of the things I noticed was this particular episode centers on three major Marvel movies, which are Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Infinity War, and to a certain extent, Captain America Civil War. The first major thing you notice is how the show starts, and it descends from the What If logo compared to how in the past it will actually dissolve. Now, to a certain extent, this also reminded me of Star Wars because they practically do the same thing after introducing us to the movie. We see Hulk being transported to Earth via the Bifrost. This is the exact same way that Heimdall transported Hulk to Earth after being decimated by Thanos. So it's quite logical to assume that the same thing happened here as well. The framing of the shot and the camera tilt and even how Hulk lands in the Sanctum Santorum is the exact same way it happens in the movie. Although with this universe, it's a bit of a grayscale because of course everyone has turned to a zombie but Hulk does not know that yet. Anyone got any clothes? Hulk asks for some clothes here which I think is a callback to the very first Avengers movie. So there is actually a deleted scene where after he falls out of the heli carrier, he meets this old security guard who he then asks for some clothes. Ebony Moore and Corvus Glaive arrive from the cruise ship the same way they were beamed down in Avengers Infinity War. And Hulk is going through that same confidence crisis that he was going through. And even the dialogue is also pretty much the same, even though it's a different context at times. What do you mean no? What do you mean no? We then see Tony Stark, Doctor Strange and Wong arrive through one of the portals but we see them in a silhouetted form. It's not until later that we actually realize that they also have become zombies. Hulk is then saved by Wasp and Spider-Man. And then we see the Watcher narrating events. Now I want you to pay close attention to his form. It's become a little more pronounced as the episodes have gone by. He came all the way from practically being within the elements in the very first episode to now being in somewhat of a physical form. Of course, in the last episode, we saw him reveal himself to Doctor Strange since Doctor Strange already could sense him and see him and even hear him at certain points. We then see the Nexus events for which this universe is what it is and we see that Jennifer and Diane contracted this quantum virus which allowed her or unfortunately transformed her into a zombie and with Hank Pym also becoming a zombie after trying to save her, it does lead to everyone else becoming infected very quickly. Also, in this universe, it does put Ant-Man and the Wasp two weeks before the events of Infinity War, so it's quite logical to assume that that's the same time frame that is in the movies as well since that's been a bit of a toss-up sometimes. These Avengers also have Black Panther in the lineup now that's because Thor and Hulk are off-world and somehow in this universe Black Panther already joins the Avengers at this particular point in time. We then get Spider-Man with one of his short films and this is a callback to Spider-Man Homecoming where at the beginning of the movie we saw him vlogging the whole airport fight from Captain America Civil War. I want to notice how characters are introduced with this freeze frame effect. So we get his languages Slavic folklore and crime. The Slavic folklore is definitely a reference to Ant-Man and the Wasp where he kept talking about Baba Yaga and actually in this episode he does refer to Baba Yaga which is the boogeyman in their culture. Baba Yaga, the witch. They tell stories to children to frighten them. Bucky is referred to as murder, killer arm and sleeper and murder of course calling back to how he had to kill so many innocents including the parents of Tony Stark. And heavy sleeper I think being a reference to the post credit scene of Black Panther where he was woken up by children when he became the white wolf in Wakanda. Sharankata is listed as spycraft, first aid and eulogies. Eulogy is actually a callback to Captain America Civil War where she had to give the eulogy for Peggy Carter, her aunt who had passed away. At certain point you also see Louise with the XCON tag on his shirt. XCON is the security and surveillance company that they established in Ant-Man and the Wasp are also in the comics and I'm really wondering where Louise is. Okoye interrupts this filming session before they are made aware of what's going on in Camp Lehigh. Camp Lehigh actually shows up in Captain America the First Avenger. That was where Cap dove on the grenade and also that's where the Tesseract was at one point which we did see in Avengers Endgame. Uh, uh splitting up, do you guys just not have horror movies in Wakanda? We don't need them. We have American reality shows. Okoye is a straight savage. This scene really did give me a callback to Spider-Man 2 and I'm pro I'm really hoping it's an easter egg to Tobey Maguire showing up in No Way Home. We then see an ambush from a zombie Falcon and Hawkeye. And then we get this fight scene with the zombie Captain America. Now I think that in all of this, this is actually a callback to the Marvel comics where there were Marvel zombies. And these Marvel zombies existed in F21. Four, nine. This is where we see zombie Captain America. The shield toss over here reminds me of the very first fight scene that Cap and Bucky had in Captain America The Winter Soldier where Bucky also catches the shield and tosses it back at Cap. Sorry pal, guess this is the end of the line. <laughs> Now Bucky saying this is kind of interesting because the end of the line has been a reference between the two friends. Because I'm with you to the end of the line. 
but also it's actually a soundtrack that Alan Silvestri composed I think from the very first Captain America movie or one of them I'll just play it on the screen and by taking the shield Bucky becomes the Captain America of this universe and then just as with every classic zombie movie someone has to get a cut which leads to their impending death my mom, dad, uncle Ben, Mr. Stark now happy have I've lost a lot. Yeah, Peter seems to be going through a lot right now. He does imply that Aunt May may be dead, but we're really not sure as well. But he is implying the fact that the people that are closest to him are going away, and it's kind of similar to in the movies as well. And after Hope gets them to safety, Hope passes out. Now, this is a bit reminiscent to Ant Man the Wasp, where because of his enlargement, Scott also passed out and fell into the water. And then they meet Vision. And then we see the proof of this cure from the Mind Stone being Scott Lang, who is only a head at this point in time. You're thinking, I've lost weight. Thank you for noticing. But don't worry, I'm not gonna let it go to my head. Sorry, I tend to process traumatic events with dad jokes. Drives Hank crazy. Now it's quite interesting to see how Vision has a bit of a villain vibe, but really when you look at it, he's kind of been like that before in Captain America Civil War when he had to do what he thought he had to do based on logic, but ultimately yields to some form of emotion. Bucky discovers T'Challa who has his leg amputated. And per his narration to Okoye, you can see that he did survive the events in which the Avengers were all taken down. And actually when you listen closely to the back while T'Challa is narrating this to Okoye, you can hear a bit of the Wakandan music element in the back. Vision grabbed me in San Francisco. Thought he was saving me. And then we see a zombie Scarlet which in her old gear. This sort of evokes WandaVision vibes but in reverse because in that particular series Wanda couldn't let go of Vision dead and so she had to create this whole reality. But in this one Vision just couldn't kill Wanda. Vision then pulls the Mind Stone out the exact same form that Thanos did and even with the same expressions that he had on his face in the movie. Now this scene over here sort of evokes Captain America Civil War again but in this context it was Steve and Bucky leaving the hangar and then we see that a zombie is still capable of showing some emotion now this is quite interesting how even in their zombie forms they still have powers but then I'm also guessing that if they didn't have their powers they wouldn't be those characters that we know them to be so yeah and then in Wanda trying to bite Hulk we see Hulk show up first time since the episode started and he does protect him now this is a bit of a callback the very first Avengers movie where he talks about putting a gun through his mouth but the big guy spat the bullet out I didn't see an end, so I put a bullet in my mouth and the other guy spit it out. And then Hulk sacrifices himself just to make sure that T'Challa, Spider-Man and Scott could get away from the whole scene and get to Wakanda. Now based on the logic that Hulk couldn't be bitten by Wanda, it's quite logical to think that Hulk would actually survive this entire event and only might be wiped out by Thanos, but let me get to that very quickly. And then we see a zombie wasp grabbing the quad jet. This is reminiscent of how Scott Lang grabbed War Machine in the airplane fight or the airport fight in Captain America Civil War. Then we see our heroes heading straight to Wakanda where we see a zombie Thanos with five stones in the Infinity Gauntlet waiting for the sixth one to show up being the Mind Stone. If you did enjoy this breakdown you want to see more of these down the road please do subscribe to my channel and uh, leave a comment below let me know what your favorite part of this episode is. I am done and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Do take care I've been your favorite Dark Man and I am out. Peace.